Hey guys, it's Tilmer Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I got something really unique for you and that's going to be to show you how we can use machine learning with my social distancing app. We're going to be using an application called Love. I'm going to show you basically what you see playing behind the scenes where I'm using a machine learning tool that is going to simplify the process. At the end of the video, we're going to be looking at how we can integrate that into Unity by using a service that I created in Python and TensorFlow API. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. I am currently projecting right now. So this demo is doing face detection and also body tracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of the masks. Go ahead and put this one on. As you can see that it's detecting the mask. And I also get two different values, which are the values that you see on the screen right now. I take it out and then it also detects it. I can also put uh, basically my hands around my face and it shouldn't detect anything, right? So just to prove the concept, I'm also going to be trying a different mask and everything is working 100% of the time. When I started the detection, I had also PowerShell running, and this is running a service that I wrote in Python, like I was telling you in the beginning of the video, and the model that I got generated and I'm using from this got generated by using an application called Lob. So if we open Lob, I'm gonna show you how it looks like. And the purpose of using Lob is for people that are not really, really familiar with machine learning. It basically allows you to do everything by just dropping in images. And what you can see here is that I have 27 different images. And in this case, these are, you know, images of me wearing a mask. I'm using the white mask. And then some of the images at some point are going to show other people because I wanted to make sure that I could detect other people as well and that it wasn't just going to be me. So if you look at all the images, I have a total of 54. I have, you know, 27 with me wearing a mask. I also have about 27 of me not wearing a mask and also other people that are not wearing a mask. Some of them are from close proximity. Some of them are from me being in the office because I wanted to make sure that it was going to detect it. And everything, everything works well. Really impressed with this application. So if you want to generate a model, which is what I did in my case, you have a few options. You can use TensorFlow Lite. You can use TensorFlow JavaScript. The one that I'm using for this demo is the TensorFlow. And when you click on it, it's going to generate a model. If we go into my Visual Studio code, I can show you what it generated. And there's a couple of things that I generated. I decided to put everything under a server because I created a flat server. I'm not gonna go into too much detail of how I did that because I wanna keep this you know, more towards AR than, it, than I do towards Python. But just know that I grabbed their example, which they generate, and then I refactor it to work with the flat server, which is basically running, uh, basically running an HTTP server and I'm running just a, a class that I refactor and also repredictions, repredictions with a stream. I'm passing in a stream from Unity and then I'm reading that information. So if we were to minimize this, you're gonna see that I'm getting a bunch of predictions here. And I have some without a mask, because in this case, it didn't detect a mask. But if I, get, if I get further up, you're gonna see that it detected a masking. This is where I was wearing it. I also get two different values. One of them is going to be the first label, which in this case is mask, and the other one is going to be without a mask. In this case, it didn't detect that I didn't have a mask, so that's what I have a 0, 0.004. And in this case, it did detect the mask, so that's why I have a 99.5% accuracy on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go into my other scene where I have the combination of mask and also body tracking. We're going to hit play, and I wanna show you the PowerShell window while I'm running this, right? So right now I'm not wearing a mask and that's what basically is detecting. I am holding my phone with my hands. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down and perhaps just put it right there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put a mask on. And you're gonna see how the values are gonna change. And make sure that I, so you can see that as soon as I do that, it's going to start detecting a mask and everything is happening in real time. So it's really powerful. Every image that I take from Unity is getting sent to the server server is parsing the information and then basically I'm getting a prediction and based on that prediction I change the label in Unity. So what I'm going to do now that I show you how that works is I'm going to show you everything that is happening in Unity to make this work. So I told you that I had a Python server so that's what we're going to be looking at. So if you take a look at the the face tracking and let me go ahead and take a look at the expand the AR session origin and AR camera and if we take a look at this, I have a couple of components. Obviously the ones that are belonging to the AR camera manager, AR camera background, but I also have something new which I created for this demo, which is called the AR image extractor manager. And that basically, that's what it says. It extracts an image from 
the from AR Foundation, AR Foundation it is exposing a frame change event on the AR camera manager. When that happens, I basically just create an image and then I store the result in an image result. So if we take a look at this, let me go ahead and bring this in. I'm gonna quickly walk you through this code. So I need a reference to the AR camera manager, that's what I have. And then I also need a texture 2D because I wanted to create this kind of like cool, you know, overlaying here that we could see, so that we could see what was happening and also with the values that I get from the first label as well as the second label and also the texture 2D so that we could actually see it, you know, in real time. As we're updating that texture, that's what AR Foundation is sending me. So that's what I'm doing with the raw image. I get the texture. I also, I did this for debugging purposes just to determine if I, I just wanted to see how the image looked like because when I, when I get it in the Python server, I wanna make sure that, I, that I'm parsing that correctly and the image is rotated in the right direction. We also have enabling down sampling. This is just a feature that I added to basically, you know, resize the image as I get it from AR Foundation. Also the frequency, because I didn't want to change that, didn't want to actually send that on every frame, otherwise the, the application was getting no responsive. So I can control that with a timer. I get a reference to these components on, on enable. I also, you know, remove the binding to the frame resume event. Here I add it. And then if, if I don't have, basically if this is not null, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be writing it to a file system. I don't do this all the time, only when I set that property to true. Otherwise, you know, I skip that. And it's not good that you do that on every frame or like too frequent because it, it's really going to in increase the FPS. So this is just optional for me to debug it while I'm using it in Unity. And then I increment the timer in here. If we are, you know, if, if we're basically beyond the frequency that I know that I can, I can save an image. And I took this example from one of the examples that Unity provides on how to get an image from the CPU. So it shows you here how to do that. I basically just call this method. This method gets me a CPU image. That's going to be the image that has basically myself at this, at the point that this image, this method gets executed. Once we go through that, we have to use a using statement because there's a lot of things happening in here. Make sure that the, we're disposing that image, otherwise we're gonna have leaks. So that's what I'm using using here. And I also have a couple of parameters in here and the downsampling that I was showing you, if we have it set to true, we basically divide it by two. If we don't have downsampling enabled, it's just going to be using the, the full resolution image. I also tell what the, what the format is gonna be, in this case, R RGB, a32, and then I also did this because as we, we want to make sure that we we're, we're flipping this to the vertical axis, so we're mirroring, mirroring the image. So that, so I also do this basically to mirror the image so that we have the image, you know, flip correctly. And then the other thing that I do is we, we get the size with the buffer, we also convert the image, and then we dispose the CPU image. And then at the end, what's gonna happen is the image result, it's going to have a texture, and that's going to be the texture that is get, getting exposed from, you know, from running this, this method. So now that I have that, how does it actually, how do we actually evaluate it by using TensorFlow? And that's some of the things that I try, I try to use something called TensorFlow Sharp for, in order for us to integrate it into Unity, that didn't work, so I ended up just creating that Python server that, because I was more familiar with that. So let me show you how that part works. So if we go into the AR mass detector, I have a script here called the AR mass detector. And then it basically has a URL that I can pass in and it has a prediction endpoint. So if I go into my Python here and we look at the, the actual server, you're gonna see that I have two different routes. One of them is gonna be the prediction route. And this is so that I can test it. And then I also have a prediction upload so that I can pass in basically an image. So this one is a post meta, it basically takes the file and as long as the file is in there, it's gonna to try to read it into a stream. Once I have the file in a stream, I pass that to the predictor, which in my case is gonna be the file, the, the TF reader that I refactor from what Lobe is actually generating. So if we go here, you're gonna see that it has a predictor, right? So that's what it is, it basically just calls that meta, it passes the stream and then I'm printing that information, which is what you see here on the, on the PowerShell, that's what you'll see right here. So once I have it, I return a list of predictions. And if you look in here, these are the predictions, also the confidences, two different values. Now, how does that get into Unity? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm gonna go here. And 
if this is beyond your knowledge on services, it's okay. I, I'm going to be doing another video on this. Just know that it's going to be calling into this URL and we're going to be passing the image as a, as a raw stream. And then I also have a frequency and this URL is going to be the URL that my server is exposing. So if I were to kill this, let me go ahead and kill the server, control C, there we go. You're going to see that I'm doing Python and I'm, I'm telling it to run this Python script. When I run it and I hit enter, it's actually going to be exposing uh, an endpoint, which is the service that is running in Python. So that, that server URL, and it's going to give us that at some point in here. I think once it's finished initializing the model, you're going to see that it's listening at this port, which is 000, and then port 5000. Obviously, if you were to basically host that in your own web server, that's going to be, uh, that will be something different. It will be your static IP address or your domain. So that's what this is. Then I just have frequencies and then all the UI elements that I need to, that I'm changing based on the detection. The part that is important to know here is that I have a frequency, right? Once I hit the frequency, I am reading the information from the AR image extractor that I just showed you. I'm encoding that image to, to JPEG. And then I'm saying, okay, if the image stream is not null, then I'm going to be running a core routine. That core routine is calling into the service. So if we go into the service here, it's basically going to say, okay, I'm going to create a web www form. I'm going to be passing that information to the HTTP server that is running on my local host. And then at some point it's going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to say, okay, this is completed. If for whatever reason I get an error, I'm just sending an error back. If I don't get an error, what I'm doing is I'm converting the data, which is going to be the raw data you saw on PowerShell. I'm converting it to JSON. If that data is converted to JSON correctly, I'm converting that to basically an object so that we can read the predictions. And I know that this is a lot, guys. I'm going to be going into a lot more detail. Just know that at some point when this callback gets generated, I'm basically binding that information back into Unity. And that's how Unity knows when I'm wearing a mask and when I'm not wearing a mask. So I know that was a lot to take in, but just know that this is working. I'm going to be putting this in GitHub as a public repository in about a week. So you guys can download it for now. It's going to be available to patrons only. So if you guys have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.